Welcome to Gacha Pencil, my name is Edric and this is part 1 of my colouring tutorial. There are many methods to colour an artwork from grayscale to full colour. I generally use two methods. One I use when doing concept art to colour the artworks quickly. And another method which gives me more control over the colours when I'm doing my illustrations. Okay, so I want to make this as easy to understand as possible. So I will break down the tutorial to two parts. Make sure to watch both of them so that you can utilise both methods for your own artworks. I use Clip Studio Paint for my artworks, but the same methods can also be used if you are using Photoshop. All digital painting softwares kind of use the same concepts, so the skills you learn will definitely translate to any other softwares. I will be showing you how to colour this portrait that is still in grayscale. It is possible to start your artworks just working on values first and then colouring it later. This is one of the many advantages of working in digital format. So while I do not think that doing digital art is easier than traditional per se, it is definitely more convenient if you know what you are doing. Okay, so first off, you want to check and make sure that all your layers are separated and in order. For my artwork here, I have the line layer on top and then the hair, body and face underneath that. A very important thing for you to do first when you are in grayscale is to make sure that your artwork has enough contrast. You want to make sure that the elements pop and differentiate from each other enough. For that, I use the tone curve here to adjust the contrast of the grey layers. Make sure to play around with the curves as you see me doing to create the contrast. Your goal is to make the elements pop out more while maintaining the shading details as much as you can. Once you are done with that, we can now start colouring the artwork, layer by layer. We shall start with the face layer first. I am going to duplicate the layer, and while you have that layer selected, you want to select the Gradient Maps tool from the Tonal Correction menu. Alright, so here we have the Gradient Maps menu, and as you can see, I can simply select one of these templates, and it automatically colours my face layer. This is another tool I want you to play around with and learn what it can do. Take a look at the top bar. The colours on the left will replace the darker shades on your grey layer and the colours on the right will replace the lighter shades. As you can see, if I choose any colours at all, even this purple, the colours will blend automatically based on your grey scale. I am choosing to go with a lighter gradient of colours here. After that, I erase the eyes of the layer that I have just coloured to uncover the layer below, which is still in grayscale. I am doing this to colour the eyes using gradient maps again. This time, I simply choose the purple colour and adjust the shades until I am happy with the eyes. So now that I am done with the face, let us proceed to the hair colour and use exactly the same method that we used before to colour the grayscale layer. So 
So a little bit of character design tips for you. When colouring a character, it is always a good idea to make the eyes and hair the same colour. A thing I like to do is to have the darker shade lean towards a more reddish version of the colour you chose and the lighter shade lean towards a more bluish version of the colour. I think this makes the colour look more natural and less one-dimensional. Alright, as you can see, we are moving really quickly here. We will now start to colour the body and headband together. I am looking for a neutral vibe here, so I adjusted this yellow template with more whites and greys, so that it ends up being a creamish sort of colour. Now, using the same method I did for the face, I am going to colour the tie green. So here is a colour theory tip. There are certain colour combinations that go well with each other. One of them being purple, yellow and green. And with that, we have very quickly coloured the artwork from grayscale to full colour. Make sure to play around with the gradient maps too to find your favourite colour templates. You can also save them and the next time you need to colour an artwork, you don't even need to adjust the colours. Alright, so make sure to watch part 2 of my colouring lesson as well to learn how to colour your grayscale artworks. You can save this video and watch it over again if you cannot catch up. Eventually, when you know how to fully use the tool, you will be colouring your artworks so quickly your friends will think that you are a wizard. The other two coloured artworks you see on the screen now is what I will be showing you how to do in the colour glazing method video. It gives you more control over the colours and also allows you to be more expressive. I will also teach you more art tips to improve your art skills and make you a better artist. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and more importantly, learn something new from this. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I will try my best to answer. Make sure to also like and subscribe to become a better concept artist.